Hey guys, so first off, no spoilers, but it is um, 3.30 a.m. I just watched Game of Thrones and I am shook to my very core. Later on Monday, not half three in the morning, which was the last time that I checked in with you, and also when I started this vlog, which is going to be really random. But to get into like what I'm actually reading and stuff, it is currently the 29th of April, so we have the rest of tonight and then one more day left of the Owls. And I have admitted, not really defeat, because I've completed both my Bacopoli for April and I've also completed my Owls for my career, but this is going to be, I think, my eighth. So I'm not gonna get all 12, but I'm currently reading After Alice by Gregory Maguire and I kind of Wrapped up last week's vlog really haphazardly last night I was kind of tired and the weekend was so busy that I didn't really remember a lot about this book But I think I can talk about it a little bit better now. So I've read about 45 pages so far today I'm on page 165. It's only a short book. So I got this much left so not very much and i'm hoping to finish it either tonight or tomorrow because i'm just like i'm not not enjoying it i just don't love it so gregory Maguire is known for putting a bit of a twist on classic fairy tales and children's stories he's most famous for wicked which is the popular broadway musical and i absolutely adore the concepts of his books i just find that the execution is not always the best so after alice is a spin on alice in wonderland but it doesn't follow alice it follows alice's friend ada and there is also a secondary perspective which is alice's sister lydia so right at the beginning of this book we meet ada who who is a disabled main character she has a crooked spine i think this is set in 1862 so there's no real terminology for like what her medical condition is she just has a crooked spine and she has to wear a back brace she has run away without her governess to go and find alice on her way to find alice she meets lydia alice's sister who says that she hasn't seen alice in a while and then Ada's governess comes chasing after her. Ada tries to hide and she falls down a rabbit hole into Wonderland. Now this also follows a secondary perspective of Lydia who is talking to her father's friend's friend who is an American guy called Mr. Winter. He has a ward or kind of an adopted son called Siam who is a black child who has been freed from slavery in the US. We don't know very much about him and I don't understand the point of the secondary perspective. It kind of alternates chapters so you have a chapter following Ada in Wonderland and then you have a chapter following Lydia in the real world. Now I don't think the representation is very good in this. I've said that it has disability rep and it has POC rep but I don't think that either of that representation is done well. I can't speak for it but the representation hardly exists and where it does it is bad. So for the disability rep as soon as Ada falls down the rabbit hole her back brace just like springs off and she's fine and she's just going about like whatever it is that she's doing in Wonderland. Now the small black boy who is in Lydia's perspective everything was going fine with him. You have to remember that this book is set in 1862 so it does have a lot of prejudice that is indicative of the time when this book is set and I understand that and I'm not really saying that it's bad rep because of that even though obviously there is prejudice and racial bias and discrimination shown. This is like very mild spoilers 
it's not really part of the storyline as far as I can tell. It's just an incident that happens where the little boy turns out his pockets and he has a chess piece from the chess set in Lydia's house. And the cook says that he's a thief and he has to go put it back. And Lydia says that she's going to find Mr. Winter to tell him what the boy has done. And when she comes back, he's disappeared. No, Lydia then is convinced that this boy has gone to steal things from her. And she is currently hunting him down trying to incriminate him for something she's searching for him she's thinking of all the horrible things that he must be doing because he's a small black boy and that just really irritated me as far as the storyline goes i don't know why we have a perspective from lydia don't know why that makes sense it's only a short book so i don't know the storyline aside from that is okay i'm not super compelled but for gregory Maguire, it is not as dense as i expected to be so i am reading it a lot faster than i thought i would so that is where i'm up to with my currently reading when i finish this i'm not going to attempt anything else even if i finish tonight i am just going to start with my may tbr because if you saw my bookopoly went up yesterday and bookopoly is testing me in may so i want a tiny bit of a head start so i'm gonna go now because i have like 30 minutes of footage to edit from last week's vlog i just wanted to start this off because i appreciate having daily light as opposed to you know that nice orange cast that you get when you film with indoor lighting. Hey, so it is 11.53pm on April 30th, which is the last day of April and the last day of the owls. If I keep looking over there, it's because I got this, which just has been demanding attention from me. So, um, every time I stop stroking her, she either kicks me, punches me, or glares at me. So, um, I gotta, I gotta keep on task over here. So we have six minutes of the elves to go, and I'm gonna pick up this book and the dog's gonna be angry. But I have just finished After Alice by Gregory Maguire, so this will be my last book for the owls. And this is for Ancient Runes to read a retelling. This is also my Bookopoly book to read the lowest rated book on my Goodreads TBR. I think I'm going to give this two stars. What I will say that it does well is I think that it really captures the nature of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. The whimsy and the atmosphere I thought was really good in that regard. However, I don't understand why there is that second perspective of Alice's sister and Ada's governess and I didn't really enjoy the narrative. It was pretty quick to read to Gregory Maguire, I think he's writing, is either more enjoyable in this or I'm just older now and more able to comprehend his writing style. However, didn't really enjoy it. I don't have much else to add apart from the little bits I've just said because I think I pretty much covered it all yesterday. So I'm done with this. So that was my eighth owl. I can't remember the full list of the ones that I've completed at this minute. I'm going to film my wrap up on Thursday, I think. But the only ones I didn't complete were Transfiguration, Defense Against the Dark Arts, Muggle Studies and Arithmancy. So I'm pretty happy with my progress. Stop hitting me. Oh. You got a whippy little tail. I think I completed eight last year as well. I got all the ones for my Magizoologist career and four extra because I only needed four for that. And so all is well. However, I did remember that I've booked a holiday during the newts month. So I'm not sure how much progress I'm going to get done then. I think for the newts, I'm not going to put any restrictions on Bookopoly. So like I don't have to complete all of the books because I am going to be on holiday for a week and I just don't want to put that strain on myself. You know, I want to enjoy my holiday. I'm going to try and pre-film my videos, but I'm not going to force reading when I'm on holiday. So now that we've finished this and it is three minutes away from becoming May, I'm going to go get my first May book Hopley book. And the first book that I'm going to be starting is backwards, is A Storm of swords by george R. 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 martin i'm hosting the a song of ice and fire read along we just had the clash of kings live show just a couple of days ago it was on sunday i'll link it up here if you haven't checked that out yet it was on rachel's channel for those of you that don't know in the uk storm of swords comes in two parts so this book is about 1200 pages in total but it's broken down into two 600 ish page installments which is really handy so i'm going to be reading this obviously i have to read it because it's on my maybe 
but I'm going to be reading the first part in May and the second part in June just to spread it out a bit because Game of Thrones is a lot. There's a lot of information, a lot of characters, a lot of locations. I like to pay attention. So I'm going to be starting this. Undoubtedly I will start another book alongside it because like I said I can't read huge chunks of this at once. And this is my first book copy role to read an adult fantasy. If you guys have been with me for the last couple of months you'll know that since February or March I have been making myself a page breakdown every month. So I add up all the pages for all the books in my book copy TBR and then I divide it by the number of days just so I kind of know how much I should be reading to be on track. Now the first couple of months I did this my average reading had to be around 130 pages. Last month it was only 95 which was really great and surprisingly considering how wild my Bacopoli TBR is for May like the the whole process of picking that TBR was stressful. I only have to read 100 pages per day so I'm really optimistic about that. So I'm not sure if I'm going to start this now because it is midnight now and I've been kind of tired. I'm still recouping from staying up to watch Game of Thrones on Sunday night, Monday morning. So I'm not sure if I'm going to start this now, but if not, I will definitely start it tomorrow. And this is like one of the only times that I'm going into a new month reading a new book. Normally, I'm carrying over like the last so however many pages of the last book I'm reading of the month. So I'm interested to see if having a fresh start for the month impacts me in any way. Back here a while, we have A Monster Calls by Patrick S. Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. I know this was popular months ago when I did my viewer pick. And also Oryx and Crane by Margaret Atwood. Hey, so it is Thursday evening now and I just thought I'd come in and do a reading update because I haven't done that for Storm of Swords and I have also started another book to read alongside it. So Storm of Swords I started yesterday. I haven't read any of this today because I'm trying to keep up with my daily page goal and I was behind for yesterday. I read 66 pages of this and I am already loving it a lot more than Clash of Kings. The chronology in this is interesting because the first few chapters overlap with the end of Clash of Kings. So trying to to find the timeline is just taking me a little moment but where I'm up to now is where Clash of Kings ends so I think everything is normal now from where I left off at the end of Clash of Kings but I am enjoying this so so much. I read 66 pages yesterday easily like it wasn't a problem and when I was reading Clash of Kings it was a little bit of a slog so I'm definitely excited to read more of this. Not sure if I'll pick it up tonight but I will definitely pick it up again tomorrow. So normally I read my Bacopoli books in order for the month. However, the first two books on my Bacopoli TBR are A Storm of Swords and The Queens of Inneslea. Both have around 600 pages and I don't want to be reading two really dense books at the same time as each other. That's how I get confused if I'm reading similar genre books or two really dense books. So I picked up the book that is my third Bacopoli role, which was the Community Chess Card, which was to randomly generate a number and read that book on my shelves. The random number generator Generator picked Gossip Girl by Cecily von Ziegazar. This is the book series that the show is based on. This is the first book. I have not read any of these books before but I have them all and I'll be honest I never intended to read them because it's something I was interested in at the time that I bought them. I got all of these secondhand. They were no more than one pound each but where I'm at now I had very much thought that I had grown out of them. I am currently 68 pages into this. And I don't hate it. So this follows the socialites and the children of very rich people who go to their private schools in the Upper East Side of New York City. Now I think that this book is going to be very problematic and not really stand up to the test of time but I actually think it's pretty well written for what it is. It is kind of like a baby Sex in the City but I think that the writing in this is so much better than Sex in the City which is a book that I hate read. I hated that book so much and I am not hating it. I'm really not hating it. I can't even predict what I'm going to rate this book because the quality is not going to be great but I think I'm going to enjoy it. I always talk about these series that I own that I think are going to be really addictive trash. So far none of those series that I predicted I would binge read and kind of not think were any good but really enjoy reading have proven not to be all that good and I've just really disliked them. I think this might be the series that is my trash series that I just eat up even though it's technically awful. What I will say about this is that these are partying teens, they are socialites, they have celebrity problems, they're like 17 but they drink a lot, they have sex, I think they shoplift as well at some point, some of them even though they're loaded, and trigger warnings for I think 
bulimia. There's definitely a character with an eating disorder. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's not portrayed very well. But it is definitely in here. So if eating disorders trigger you, there is that. There is a wide cast of characters in here and it is third person. And this book is not designed to show you how hard it is to have an eating disorder. It's literally kind of one of those things like, oh, celebrities have eating disorders and used to glamorize it like that. Yeah, just be wary of that going into this. So these are the two books that I'm currently reading. I'm going to read some more of this tonight. I'm aiming to get to around page 130. And then I'm actually going to go and play Fortnite because the week 10 challenges were actually revealed today. So that means that I have one week to complete all of the challenges and do the battle pass. And I haven't been playing it very much the last couple of weeks because I've been playing Elder Scrolls Online. So I'm going to go do that. Still haven't filmed my April wrap up. I have to do that tomorrow. Like I literally don't have a choice now. So it has to be filmed and edited tomorrow. So I'm gonna suffer tomorrow so that I can chill out a little bit tonight. Hey guys, so I am getting ready to finally film my wrap up. So I thought I would come on and let you know how my reading is going. So today I finished Gossip Girl by Cecily Von Ziegazar and I 100% did not hate this, but I did give it three stars because there were some things they were just a little bit off. So we'll start with the good things or at least the things that I enjoyed. And I believe that later on in this series, the TV show does not follow the books at all and they go in very different directions. This bit is probably going to be irrelevant for the rest of the series, but this is the first episode of the TV show. So if you've seen Gossip Girl at all, Serena comes back to town, nobody wants her there and they are organizing this big glamorous party that she's not invited to and we also have dan and jenny jenny is 15 and very much wants into like this world of socialites and it's a bit of a, a harsh wake-up call for her so i liked that the characters felt the same they felt like the characters in the show there's like a few different things like this book was written in 2002 so characters smoke a lot in this and that's acceptable even though they're all teenagers because smoking wasn't like such a huge no-no at the time but it's very much scandalous salacious etc as the show is and i loved gossip girl i really really loved gossip girl um it got a little bit disappointing towards the end but I really love the show. I don't think this book is badly written. I think it's pretty decently written. I think I mentioned yesterday that I read Sex and the City, which very much tries to be really clever, even though it's written in this gossip column style. Gossip Girl is a lot more palatable. It's a lot less trying to be intelligent, at least really obviously. And I enjoyed the story and the backstabbingness and how much it reminded me of the show which i just said i really love however okay so let's start with the really icky things jenny humphrey is 15 in this book and she's described as having 34d breasts like literally she is described as soon as she comes onto the page it's like she's a small girl with big curly hair and enormous 34d breasts now i don't really want to think about a 15 year old's breasts can't lie but it's made worse by the fact that she goes shopping with her brother Dan and he comments on how big they are which is just pretty grim so um, I wasn't a fan of that in another sibling relationship we have Eric and Serena and Eric calls Serena and when she answers he says yo bitch and I mean I don't have any siblings let alone an older brother but I just didn't feel like that was accurate as to how people speak to their sisters when they're younger, really. Aside from that, this book has everything that we hate today in contemporaries. It has girl on girl hate. The essential whole plot of the book is centered around girl on girl hate. There's slut shaming. There is the use of the word gay as derogatory, as in like, oh my God, it's so gay that you did that kind of thing. Um, we have eating disorders portrayed in the way that they were in the early 2000s where it's like oh my god having anorexia is such a celebrity thing to do and all that kind of thing and um how it's salacious gossip that celebrities have issues kind of thing and there is also quite a few rapey scenes like attempted sexual assault that do not get challenged which are the same in the show and it's interesting in the show actually because in the books Nate is a massive stoner and in episode one he is a massive stoner and there's the sexual assault thing and in the show Chuck is like Chuck in the book but then after episode one of the show they kind of changed it like Chuck is 
my favourite character from Gossip Girl. And I don't think we ever see Nate smoking weed again. So yeah, this book is definitely trash. I enjoyed it because it's trash. Would not recommend as a great work of literature, but it is definitely going to be, for me, what I feel like the selection series is for a lot of people. I haven't read the selection series, but I always hear it described as like junk food in book form. So it's like real trashy, but you love it anyway. And I'm definitely getting the vibe that that is what Gossip Girl will be for me. So I'm gonna carry on doing my hair and finally filming that wrap up video. And I will check in with you guys probably tomorrow because we're going to York, which is gonna be very exciting. Hey, wow, the light is bright outside. Let me just back it up a little bit. So today is Saturday and we are heading into York to do some shopping and have a great time. Tomorrow is my birthday. This is kind of the thing that I'm doing. I'm not one for making a big deal about my birthday. I don't like getting older. So we're just gonna get some food. I might have a couple of cocktails and I'm gonna do some shopping and I'll take you guys with me. Sunday morning I have just pretty much woken up I've had a coffee that is about it but today is my birthday and I have a stack of parcels here that have arrived during this week and I haven't ordered anything so I think that these are off my Amazon wish list and I've had to wait till today to open them because like I said today is my birthday so the suspense has literally been killing me, but nobody else is awake yet. So I'm gonna open this stack of Amazon parcels for you guys, because I think they're all books. Also, there is a meerkat here that's desperately trying to get into my pocket to go to sleep. So um, she'll be opening them with me. You go to sleep there. So I know that one of these is from Cody, from Cody's Book Corner, but I don't know about any of the others. So this is gonna be exciting. Like literally the suspense has been killing me because I have an Amazon wish list, but I didn't tell anybody that I do. So I don't know who any of these are from really. Oh my God. So the first one we have is Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan, which has deckled edges. I don't really know too much about what this one is about, but I know that it has been getting a lot of hype recently, so I really, really want you to read this. On the inside of the dust jacket, it says, a girl named Nadja who hears the whispers of gods inside her head, a prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins, and a monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes, and a smile that cuts like a knife. So I'm really excited to get to this one. I've only heard great things. Oh my god, this one's... <sighs> Happiest of birthdays to you, lovely. I hope you have the best day ever. You deserve it, Haley. So this one is from Haley, from Haley Marie, and thank you so much, Haley. I was not expecting this. I'm just, I'm a little bit shook right now, to be honest. <laughs> Number two. So this one is in a gift bag and it has a letter with it, which is interesting. It's, this looks like it might be a promotional thing, but I've never received one of these before. Okay, so it's just got the packing slip in it, but they put it in an envelope. So this one is in a nice little bag. Oh, it's so nicely wrapped. Oh my God. So this one is Peace and Turmoil by Elliot Brooks. Elliot Brooks is a booktuber here on YouTube. She reads a lot of high and adult fantasy and I absolutely love her channel. I wanted this to support her. As it is self-published, it is a little bit pricey, which is why it's on my Amazon wish list because I prefer to have physical copies than eBooks because when I have eBooks, I never remember that I have them to read them. I really, really wanted this, but I, I had no idea that anybody would buy me this. I don't know much about the story of this. I do know that it is a high fantasy. Elliot Brooks really likes author 
authors like Brandon Sanderson, so I think it's going to be an epic fantasy with a large cast. They are kind of my favourite stories, so I really wanted to read this. So the note on this one, this is, says, happy birthday, you beautiful human. I'm so glad I wore you down and made you become my friend. Mwahahaha. Seriously, love you a whole bunch. P.S. You are forced to buddy read this with me, okay? And this is from Rachel, and Rachel, you already bought me stuff. What the fuck are you doing? Like, seriously. So thank you so much, Rachel, for peace and turmoil. I'm just, I'm, I'm shook. I'm shook right now. Number three is also real chunky. Oh, we have two things in this, and this is like, I've seen one of them, one's really exciting. So we have Descendant of the Crane by Joan He. This is a East Asian inspired fantasy story. You guys know I love my East Asian reads. This is a 2019 release, so I've been really excited to read this one. This is also being read for a whole bunch of book clubs this month because it is Asian American Pacific Heritage Month. Asian Pacific American Heritage Month? One of those is right. And the Asian Readathon is also going on this month, so this one has been talked about quite a lot. And and the cover for this is absolutely stunning. I have had this on my radar since before Christmas. And also in here we have Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This one is a gender bent Knights of the Round Table retelling. I absolutely love Arthurian legend, so I really wanted to read this for some time. I also believe that it has some queer rep in here. So my gift note on this one says, happy birthday, Bay. Wishing you the best of birthdays, beautiful. I hope you will actually chill, girl, take a day off you more than earned it. Love you the most, Cody. So these ones are from Cody, from Cody's Book Corner. Thank you so much, Cody. I absolutely love them. And these ones are the only ones I was expecting. I'm gonna start getting emotional soon. And then lastly, I believe that this one arrived real early in the week and I only thought, like I said, that Cody was buying me something from my wish list. So this one has been intriguing me for the longest time because I have no idea who this is from. Oh my God. So this one is Ensinger by Jay Kristoff and this is the last book in the Lotus Wars trilogy by him. I've read the first two books and I really, really love them, but I got them from my library and they didn't have this one. So I haven't read it yet because I couldn't make my mind up which edition I wanted to buy it in. I'm really excited to get to this. The Lotus War trilogy is like an East Asian inspired dystopian steampunky fantasy kind of thing that has mythical creatures and samurai and steampunky like katana things. And I absolutely love it. Oh my God. Hi Becca, happy birthday. Cheers for making life super easy and having your wishlist published. Have a smashing day. From Jade, from JD Ray Reads. So thank you so much, Jade. I'm just, I'm shook. I've said that like five times. So thank you so much to Jade, Haley, Cody, and Rachel for this stack of books. You've helped make today really special. I love them. I love them all and I'm probably gonna read them all soon because I like to prioritize books that were gifted to me on my wish list. Thanks guys. Hey, so it is now almost midnight on my birthday and I'm just importing the footage into my laptop to get a bit of a head start on tomorrow because we have now arrived at the time of the evening where we're just kind of waiting for 2am so we can watch Game of Thrones. So this guy is streaming and Ryan's joining him on my Xbox over there and I'm gonna just check out my vlog footage from the week. So I thought I would come wrap it up so I can have all of my footage ready. I'll give you a reading update because I haven't given you one in a couple of days, but I haven't really read that much, which I knew that I wouldn't. I am on A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. This is my first book copy role and I'm on page 116, so not a whole lot of progress, but I'm definitely hoping to pick it up next week. Aside from that, I've had a pretty decent birthday. It's been chill. We've been making homemade pina coladas. I'm a little bit tipsy. I can't lie. So I'm hoping to sober up a little bit so I can stay up for Game of Thrones and not kind of pass out before it. So that's about it for this week's vlog. Please don't forget to like it if you like it and subscribe if you want to. But I'll catch you next week, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no